is a good one. We ought to get plenty of nice long planks out of this. Fine. Then let's get cracking, because I'm tired and hungry, and I want to go home. Last one today. First chop is mine. Hold it. Stop that. What do you think you're doing? You can't chop that tree down. Can't you see this tree has an owner? There's his name carved right up there, see? Oh. Huh? oh, my gosh, you're right, David. We just didn't notice the tree had a name on it. Well, watch it. You gotta give a tree a good once-over before you start hacking away. You bet. We promise it'll never happen again. We'll look for one without an owner. Goodbye. Goodbye. Every gnome has his very own oak tree. On the day he's born, his parents plant an acorn for him. That way, the child and the tree grow up together. When the tree is big enough, the head of the family carves the little tyke's vital statistics on the trunk. His name and birthday are carved in mystic letters called runes. From then on, that tree will be protected from all diseases, and it'll never be struck by lightning. But when the gnome dies, the tree will wither and die too. Gnomes always try to live in harmony with nature. Gnomes love life, and so do trees. We cut down trees and use their wood to build things, but we only cut down trees that are already dead. Come and watch us work. After a tree is cut down, we trim the branches and use them as rollers to move the logs to our sawmill, where we cut them into boards. We are constantly planting new trees to replace the ones that are gone. That way, the forest is always being reborn and will never disappear. For many of our expert carpenters, it's a full-time job building nests and houses for the birds. Good morning up there, little mother. How do you like your new home? everything today hmm. to thank us for the houses we build for them they keep a lookout in the forest and tell us everything that goes on that reminds me of an exciting and almost tragic story that happened to a charming little bird of my acquaintance a flycatcher by name He'd found a mate whom he was particularly fond of and was about to settle down and start a family. We gnomes built him a darn fine honeymoon cottage where soon enough, he was the proud father of a good-sized brood.
Sure is a swell day, isn't it? Boy, it's great to get out and smell the greenery. We haven't taken a stroll like this together in a month of Sundays. If you weren't running around trying to solve everyone's problems, we'd have more time. Well, you got me there, Lisa. Perhaps I do take on too much, but what should I do? Slow down. You're too old to be running around like an 85-year-old. I won't be 400 for a while yet. I've still got my health. When somebody's in trouble, I have to do my best to help. Hey there, what's the matter? Oh no, here we go again. Lisa. Oh. I understand. You don't say bird hunter in the forest, huh? What? The fly catcher? Stroll time's over, Lisa. He says the hunter used some sticky stuff to catch the male flycatcher just as he was trying to find some food for his youngins. So we'll have to think of some way to find out where he is and rescue him. Rescue him? But how? Let me think for a minute. I've got it. You head on home and send the mice out to catch all the insects they can find. Then you can take them to the flycatcher's right. children. Looks like my work's cut out for me because I'll bet that, that hunter lives in the town. David. You be careful in the town. Goodbye. You happen to know where that hunter lives? Well, that's okay. Don't worry your head about it. I'll find his home address or I'll eat my hat. I'll just sniff out his trail and ask if anyone's seen him. Goodbye. And thanks a lot for bringing me the news. Hello, Swift. Well, we're on the road again. We've got some serious business to take care of. Let's go. <laughs> Hi there, Sister Squirrel. Have you seen a man hunting birds around here this morning? Thanks anyway, Squirrel. Brother Rabbit, have you by any chance seen a bird hunter around here? Well, that's too bad. Goodbye. Good morning, friend Raven. You look as if you know something. You say this morning you saw a bird hunter trap a flycatcher that was out looking for food for his little ones? You didn't happen to see which way he went, did you? Or maybe you know of some man who spends his time trapping defenseless birds? Huh? And can you show me where this bully lives? Swift, you go home and see if Lisa needs any help. Tell her Sherlock David is on the case. Friend Raven will take me to town. <laughs> Poor little dears, they were simply famished. So that's it. He's got a store and he sells those poor little birds. Zoom on down, Raven. This time of night, everybody's gone home. I'll go in and you sit up on that lamppost and be on the lookout in case anyone shows up. I'm going to see if I can find the flycatcher. I won't be long. Oh, well, 
Bradley. Excuse me. <laughs> I guess I'll have to use my special rope to get down there. Brother guinea pig, you almost scared the daylights out of me. I thought you were a cat. You obviously live around here. Can you help me get into that bird shop? I never turned down a ride. Nice subway ride, brother guinea pig. Hmm? Oh, this is another way human beings are different from gnomes. This is criminal. I've got to find a way to set all these wild creatures free. Poor things. Thank goodness I finally found you. Take it easy, friend. I'll soon have you free. This just isn't my day. Brother guinea pig, we need a big wide exit. <laughs> You're right. We need help. Do you think you can find some? Uh, let's get down to work, friends. That's it. Snappy, open all the cages.
everybody out. for the warning, Raven. But now we have to really hurry. That man is dangerous, and if he finds us, we're in deep trouble. <coughs> and now, my friend, I have to ask for another favor. I need you to carry me and those birds to safety. They're too frightened to fly. I can't thank you enough for your cooperation. I couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> Goodbye till next time. Careful, careful, careful. Hey, you! Come back here, you little creep! I'll fix you! I'll get you. Safe and sound now. This is where we have to say goodbye. We're finally on the homeward stretch. That's the flycatcher's house over there. Good, good. better now, don't you? Now you can take over your fatherly duties again. <laughs> Serves me right. <laughs> go on, go on up and see your young ones. Goodbye, goodbye. Looks like our job here is finished. Let's go. Will you take me home, please? I'll have to take care of these poor little sick birds for a few days. I'll give them my special intensive care, and they'll be as good as new. Schlitzwey! In our next adventure, David's trouble begins when he referees a boxing match. But soon it's trouble with a capital T, as a colony of bats are in grave danger, even as they sleep. It's up to David and his friends to save them. The bats must be moved to a far-off hospital or they may die. Will the gnomes be able to move them such a great distance? Will they get to the hospital in time? Watch Airlift next time.